Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Timothy Adon. Welcome to another update. So in the last update, I worked on the adventure theme and actually showed you, you know, how much, uh, how much work and how much editing goes into what I am currently doing. And in this update, I am working on the mystical places theme which, as the title would hopefully suggest, is what I see as being used behind a stroll through a mystical forest, or when talking to a very wise old man or a priest or some such. Um, and in this video, I'm more going to talk about the... Uh, the programs that I use, the software that I utilize, and a little bit of my thought process as to uh, how this all comes about. So I won't be doing as, met, uh, bleh, bleh, as much editing in this video as I did in the last one. I figure you've probably seen enough of that. <clears throat> uh, I'm more just going to talk... Uh, technological stuff this time as well as uh how to make uh or the very basics of how i make the sampled instruments sound like real instruments so let's look at this shall we so right here i've got the dizzy solo So the Dizzy is probably the go-to flute instrument that I am using in, uh, I'm fairly certain this was also in my adventure theme, and it's in this piece and probably a couple other ones, mostly because it has all the samples I want as far as uh, effects and things like that. So let me show you what I mean here. Alright, so this is the user interface for the Dizzy. This is uh, my east-west samples, and this one is silk, which is all eastern theme, which made this really easy for finding instruments. So, the Dizzy has several samples here, as do many of the other instruments I'm using, which are these blue keys. And when I alternate between the blue keys, I get... I get different samples. So I can trigger those within the music to then get the effect that I am looking for. And if you spend a lot of time with this, you then can make the instrument sound real, you know, as opposed to samples like this. So if we go back to this, So if you can see, I've got this arc here, and this is also something that you can use in uh, a lot of these recording softwares. So right now I have it set to wheel, which is essentially a pitch shifter. So that's how I get the sound. And then expression is how you get the fade in and fade outs. So I can have it fade out and then quickly fade in again, like... Uh, right here. Like that. So, got the Dizzy, then the Koto, which is a, uh, if you've ever seen a hammer dulcimer, it, oh, it's, uh, essentially a Japanese version of that. It's really cool. I really, really want one. Someday. Someday.
and uh, as you could probably tell from the sample, the koto and the dizzy are the two more prominent instruments. And the other ones I have are the finger cymbal. Very cool. Uh, the Dynasty Odaiko, which is the, the duh, duh, duh background. But I think the most important thing is Isotope Iris, which is actually a diff, is a not from East West. This is by the Isotope Company. And that is this sound. That was a lot of fun to make, and uh, that is this, and this was a lot of fun. So this is a sampler. You can put in three different sound samples, and then you can carve out portions of the sound, and then you know play it as such if it would actually play. Uh, so, what I have here is I have resynth vocals that I have as the, the main sound, as well as uh, electronic flute, and then the, the jingling noise in the back is the, uh, <laughs> a recording of a wind chime that I had on my door that I then carved out and set to uh, play at random frequencies, and that was, that's a lot of fun. Sound design is just so much fun. If you ever get to, uh, you should probably on YouTube look up uh, Foley work, Foley, just Foley sound recording, anything like that. It's hilarious. It's so much fun. And that is what is going into this particular composition. And I have a lot of work done on it. I'm just kind of going over it. Uh, changing the things I don't really like. As you can see from the grayed out areas, I have some clips that are uh, I have sitting on the back burner because I don't know if I want to use them or not. And I have other things kind of in the works behind them, as you can see behind there. Uh, so what I have going on here is the Koto was getting a little bit repetitive. So I muted it, I copied and pasted it up here in the Dizzy track. That way, the Dizzy would be playing what the Koto was originally playing. That way I could have the same melody going throughout the piece, but it would sound vastly different between the two different instruments. And instead of having the Koto in the background, I have the E cello, which is now doing uh, chords in the background, and it sounds very nice. Here, this is well, we listen from where I am right now.
So that's currently what I'm trying to work on. In fact, I think we're going to delete this right here. Just that part. I don't think needs to be there. So I'm going to end the video right there. I am going to get some more work done on this, which I would like to be able to record for you, but the the amount of lag that goes on while I have this software going and, and the recording software going, it makes it really slow and occasionally painful to get any work done. So uh, I will upload the new version of the Mystical Places track uh, either before this video even goes up or not too long after. So I hope you enjoyed this video and oh don't forget to if you have any questions comments suggestions critiques any of that uh, you can either post a comment to this video post a comment to the Kickstarter or send me a private message uh, whatever works best for you because I would love to get some feedback on the work that I'm doing whether it's good or bad you know and that's it for the day. So have a fantastic day, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.